now. In this video, we'll be off-roading along the Medano Pass Primitive Road in Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve. 11 miles there and 11 miles back. So how far will run strictly in the forest? We had checked conditions at the visitor centre and all reports were good. In fact, we passed a ranger just as we were about to join the road who confirmed everything was good and told us to go and have fun. It started off well, but things took a turn for the worse and it turned into a much bigger adventure than any of us could ever have thought. What was Sam for that? 1.8. So this is where the deep sand is? Yeah. So you're still in two wheel mode? Uh-huh. You all try to get through? Uh-huh. This is kind of cool that they let still people to drive this place. Yeah. It's very rare. Yeah. In National Park. Uh -huh. There in that forest, I believe there were a lot of trucks. National Forest, yeah, loads. So after hiking on the dunes, we're now back in the truck and this time we are driving the Medano Pass Primitive Road. This is strictly a four-wheel drive road and we've spoken to several rangers today and they all say the conditions are good. But we're about four miles in and we've just hit our first proper water crossing. So uh, yeah, this is a pretty good four-wheel drive. Do not bring your Prius down here. Whoa, our devil eat us. <laughs> ready? I'm ready. Ready, Yanis? Yes, yes, faster. That was kind of cool. Have you done off-roading before, Janis? No. Woo! made it to Medano Pass, which is the end of this off-road journey, 11.2 miles from the start. We've done a lot of this drive actually in two-wheel drive, uh, a couple of sandy sections that uh, I couldn't get through in two-wheel drive, I had to switch to four-wheel drive, but it made it through no problems. And although it says it recommends airing down, we haven't done. We have that option if we need to, we have a compressor with us, we can air down if we need to. And if we really got stuck, we've got the traction pads as well, so I wasn't too concerned. Uh, but yeah, as always, the tyres did great, the truck did great, um, bumpy ride. Uh, it's taken us uh, almost exactly an hour to get here. They say it takes about two and a half to three hours. So maybe we were a little quicker than average, but definitely give yourself a couple of hours for this drive. The drive up to Medano Pass had been fairly easy. So we were just enjoying our drive on the way back down, taking in the beautiful scenery. We passed a couple of other vehicles, an off-road modified Jeep and a Range Rover with street tires. rain on the drive home would be good. Towards the car? Yeah, exactly. Suddenly it started raining and we were still a long way from the end. Despite the clouds, the forecast from the visitor center hadn't been suggesting much in terms of rain. It's been raining most of the way back, which 
means that all of this trail, which was nice and dry on the way out here, is now pretty muddy and slimy and all the rocks are slippery. So we're, we're just taking it nice and easy. It's not a race. The car's going to be filthy, but maybe if the rain's still ongoing by the time we get to the road, maybe it'll wash the car off. I'm probably being optimistic there. This is good fun though. And this is why whenever we go off-roading, we always make sure we have all the right equipment so that if the conditions do change, we're not caught stranded. We have everything that we would need to keep going and to recover ourselves if necessary. I'm not sure what the wet sand is going to be like. That could be nasty. The rain grew heavier and heavier. Sections of the previously dry, sandy road were now completely underwater, and it was quickly getting worse. Turning around would have been very difficult, and the long detour would have taken us further away from civilization. Not knowing how bad conditions were on the other side of Medardo Pass, we made the decision to keep going. I could hardly see the trail in places and was doing my best to gauge the water depth based on the sides of the trail. With the truck in four wheel drive, low speed, I was focused on keeping us moving slowly but steadily towards the end of the trail before conditions grew even worse. And those guys are still there, the yeah, fender. The Jeep I'm not worried about. The, the fender could get stuck. Yeah. Because he wasn't specifically right. Like, Extra uh, five, you know? No. Let's stop it at the business centre, we'll go to a ranger first. And just let them know this road is washing out really bad. This looks horrible. Um. Should we even go? Yeah. The fender won't get through this. I see. When? It'll be pretty tough. And it will get worse only. Yeah, I'm going for it. I have no choice. Be careful with this. Let's watch out. We kept the post there. We have to stop there at Ranger Post and tell yeah. them that there are two cars in the truck yeah. and the road is being washed up. There's a camp here, is there a name on it? Yeah. Just count miles, how miles, many miles it was We're at 18.5 now. Uh... 
Ours is a sand pit. Okay, I'm just going to go for it. Okay. Oh, so... Maybe they have special vehicles for this kind of condition. Maybe. Didn't push you out of the shit. <laughs> I don't know how you get out of there. Oh, that's gonna be bumpy for a second. Stop, 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 stop. Ah. Well, that's totally washed out. That no cell signal. We're right at the end. Right at the end? We're pretty close to the end, yeah. Okay, radios. Hello, does anyone copy on channel 4 CB? Does anyone copy? Please come in. Well, that's gone underneath that? I think so, yeah. You think? Or I think it's a... Um plastic thing underneath. Hello, if you copy, please come in. Please come in on channel 16. Yeah, you're right. It's a throat blanket. And how did water get under the blanket? It's just, the storm just totally washed it out. So we're on the trail on the way back. This storm has really, really badly washed out this trail. We were not expecting these conditions. This is a lot more serious than we thought. We've made it through a number of areas that have got really deep with sand and we're pretty concerned because there's two other vehicles behind us and this rain is continuing. Back there there's a Jeep, uh, a Wrangler that I'm not too concerned about, he looked pretty well equipped, but there's also a Range Rover Discovery that, I mean it's a competent off-road vehicle, but this is some pretty serious stuff. We're stopped here now because this obstacle in front of us, I really don't like the look of this. The rain has totally washed out the trail. We're talking, there's holes in the trail now, probably three feet deep. And it's actually revealed like some black uh, plastic or some kind of like sheeting that's under the sand here that I guess the National Park Service has put in to stabilize the trail. And it's completely washed it out. So we're trying to get hold of them on the radios. Just anyone who's trying the usual channels on both CB and uh, GMRS and we'll just sit here. We're going to wait for those other guys, see if they come forward. Uh, that that uh, Jeep would have more chance of getting through here than us. Otherwise, we're just going to sit out the rain, wait till that stops, and then we can actually assess the situation on foot. But right now, it is chucking it down. There is lightning all around us. Um, not the ideal situation you want to be when you're off-roading. I still feel good that we've taken all the precautions, but right now, we're probably out of our depth, so we're just going to sit here and wait for a bit until we can assess the situation a little bit more clearly. We got so far at least. I mean, I don't know how the others are going to get through that stuff back there. No, that's crazy. Especially if they start to block the roads. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say I'm here at the back. Emergency channels run, does it? 
if you copy me on CB channel 16, CB channel 16, please come in. And I know how it happened because here the water got under mm. the blanket and it went under the blanket and washed out totally underneath. Washed out, yeah. Not on over but underneath. Yeah. So okay, so we're gonna have to drive through it at some point. So what's our path? We have a shovel. We have a shovel. We have a shovel? We have a shovel. Yeah. Oh then it's not so bad. Then we can manage. Yeah, let's go make a road. Um, we have those, uh, can, those, I, those can I back up? Yes. But, yeah, well, I, don't, I don't want to, I just want to know if I can. Because if the jeep can get past, he always certainly has a winch. And if he doesn't, I have a tow strap. Yeah. No one has signal. What you. about no. skid, your skid pads? What, they're like good? Yeah, no, they're good. But they're, uh, what, all that will happen here heavy is... Heavy duty or...? Yeah. But all that'll happen here is I'll bottom out. Yeah. No, no, not no, but I mean if you shovel, put skid plates, you go like here, and then continue on, on this side of the road, you're fine. If no one will come, we will come, we will go out yeah. by ourselves. Well, first I'll rather, like, once the rain starts, we'll walk it out and see where it might, like, go into the road. Does anyone copy on channel 4? Does anyone copy on channel 4? Assistance required. You come on like channel 4 and channel 16? No, that's what 4, four by 4 people use, because channel 4 and 4 times 4. 4 by 4, 4 times 4, they use channel 4 and 16. What about rangers? Um, they don't typically use these, and the, the frequency they're on aren't public, you can't get onto them. But nobody can get up this trail except tractor or something. Yeah. I mean, the only other option we've got that I see right now is someone going down because we're not that far from yeah. so far there we are probably a mile and a half I can do that maybe two miles for the lightning so I'm going yeah that wow. is snow by the way that is uh it is snow yeah yeah you can see snow by the trees over here as well that's snow but this thing wait Oh, it's uh, oh, hail. Oh, it's yeah, been hailing yeah. here, yeah. Okay, so here's the latest. It is just after 7 o'clock in the evening, uh, so although it's light now, um, the light will start to fade in the next couple of hours. Uh, we have decided not to try and make our own way through uh, up ahead just yet. Uh, there's some big drops there. We've, we've checked it out on foot, and it really looks very, very soft. So, we have used our Garmin InReach satellite communicator. We have used that to message one of our friends and asked her to, um, to kind of get help for us. The rangers and the visitor centre are not answering because it's uh, now 7 o'clock and they're closed. Uh, we have asked her to go ahead and call 911 and see if she can find a dispatch. We're just hoping they can find someone to come and help us. We've explained to, to them or to her to pass on to them that we are fine, we're safe, we're dry, we're uninjured, the car's okay, so it's not a kind of a, an absolute emergency. That being said, um, this is a situation that we don't want to be stuck in for long and could get worse. We're also very concerned for the two people who are stuck further back. We've now been here nearly half an hour and there's no sign of them. And those rigs should have been maybe, I don't know, 10, 20 minutes behind us at most. Um, one of those in particular, the Range Rover, I'm pretty concerned may have got stuck. Otherwise, uh, our plan now, we have sent Diana's brother um, off to uh, the visitor center or to the campground to see if he can find any staff over there or um, any people with Jeeps or whatever who want to come and help us. Um, basically just to get some attention and hopefully some tools and things. It looks like to get through here we're going to have to dig the road down a little bit uh, just to level it. It's completely crazy there right now um, and so we just hope that some people can come and help us. We've sent him off with a radio. We are listening here on GMRS, CB and ham radio. Uh, he has all the frequencies and channels for those that are on so hopefully he can get the word to someone that can help us. Other than that uh, we're just going to sit tight for now. If the rain stops uh, we're going to get out and inspect the road a bit more. I've checked the front of the car uh, from the big kind of... Can you hear me? From the... Hang on. Yeah, just, just... responsible. Yeah, copy. Uh, is the radio waterproof? Um, sort of. I would try and keep it dry if you can, though. So yeah, so we've sent uh, Diana's brother off with a radio um, to try and get some help, um, but otherwise we're just... some sinking sand, just 300 meters 
Okay, so there's some quicksand apparently, <laughs> just a little bit further up. Um, you can see now why we don't want to carry on on our own. Uh, we would like to make sure there's some other people here when it uh, when, when we try that. Uh, maybe we're being overcautious, but in a situation like this, I would rather be overcautious if possible. Uh, I also want to make sure that the guys further back, they could be seriously stuck. Uh, they could be injured, they could be in water, we just don't know. Right now, we're not in a position to go and help them, and I feel horrible not being able to do that. Um, but right now, our primary goal is just our safety and making sure that, that we don't get ourselves into more trouble. That won't help anyone at all. So fingers crossed. Um, Yanis will go through and find someone who can help or at least raise the, the alarm for us and, uh, and, and we're just going to sit tight until then. You can see the road here is a complete mess. Some of those uh, drops there are like about three feet and it's actually undercut under this black fabric as well. So it's just not going to support the weight of our truck. So they say that every cloud has a silver lining. Um, our situation isn't great right now, but look at that rainbow. That is beautiful. This is the state of the road here, as you can see. It's really badly washed out. And like some of these drops are huge. You can see there, not something we want to be doing alone. As we're sitting here, a deer has just appeared. It's just by that tree there. I think it's very confused as to what's going on and why the path has suddenly disappeared. And there's this big weird black truck thing sitting in the road. In other news, we've heard from our friend, the rangers are on their way and uh, Diana's brother Yanis is still in radio contact with us and is able to, to hear us still. He's going to try and meet the rangers. Sorry, I miscalculated. It's 15 feet deep. But unfortunately, he's found a section of the road that is washed out 15 feet deep. Um, we, it's, we think it's at the side of the road rather than across the road. But either way, uh, there, there goes the deer. Either way, that sounds pretty terrifying. So um, this could take us a little while to get out of here. Not what we had planned. We had received an update from our friend that the rangers were on their way, but they had got stuck on the trail themselves. Okay, so here's the situation. This trail is in bad shape now. Yanis uh, wasn't lying, there is genuinely a washout that is probably 15, 20 feet deep and about, I don't know, 10, 15 feet across. Looks like we can drive around it. We're very reticent to do that because it means driving across all of the, the plants and things. Um, we're certainly not going to do that without the rangers okaying it first. But if we can't do that, I, I don't see any way that we're getting out of here without a tractor coming and rebuilding the whole trail. And that could be, I don't know, days, weeks, weeks who knows. So right now we are hiking along the trail to meet up with Yanis and the rangers. I would just feel a lot more comfortable if we're all there together. We've taken some photos of the trail that we can show to them and, uh, and maybe together we can come up with a, a plan, but whatever it is, it's not going to be pretty. And uh, we've got a lot of gear with us, but we certainly weren't prepared to comfortably spend the night in the, in the truck. So uh, yeah, fingers crossed at this point. So we've made it here to where the rangers are. They've asked us to step back out of the way, uh, but right now you can see their Raptor, their Ford Raptor um, ranger truck is stuck completely in the mud, just deep. And the tractor's been working out for quite a while to, to try and clear some space so that we can dig it out. Okay, so next update. We are back at our trailer. Good. We don't have our truck. Bad. So one of the rangers very, very kindly gave us a ride home. Uh, they got their Raptor truck totally stuck in the mud, uh, it took a tractor a long time, well over an hour, to get the Raptor back out of that mud. And that was just the first of about a dozen different obstacles that are between where they were and our truck. We spoke to them, they think we did exactly the right thing in contacting them and let them know. Uh, but for now, uh, the plan is that they're going to send a construction crew out in the morning with a tractor, and they're going to try and go through each of the obstacles in turn and, and sort of make them passable, I guess. We're going to join them uh, late morning tomorrow. Uh, they've asked us not to go on too early because we'll just get in their way, honestly. Um, but we're still quite keen to get back to our truck. So for now, our truck is spending the night sleeping alone out on the trail. Uh, but we are back here at our trailer. Um, so yeah, no injuries, nothing is damaged, and all the right people are now involved. Um, so it's been a really bizarre, crazy evening and is not at all what we thought was going to happen. We plan to spend it in the swimming pool tonight. But we're all safe and uninjured, so 
that's it for now. We'll see you in the morning. Okay, so it's now the next morning and we think we have a plan. The road that we drove down before we got stuck was actually in far better condition than the road after that. Now we don't know if the storm came through and has made it worse, um, we're not sure. But our plan right now is to head back over to the uh, National Park and uh, see if we can get the truck back up the other way. Um, and see if we can do that uh, before the rangers clear the road going forward. Uh, obviously if we get stuck we're just gonna have to go uh, stop and wait and wait for the rangers to get to us but if the road is clear uh, we can actually get out the far end and it's about a 70-80 mile round trip drive to get back round to here if we do go that way but that's probably still quicker than them filling a 15 foot trench. <laughs> So uh, we've got to get over to the National Park, uh, but we have no truck because it's over stuck over there. So we're going to cycle. It's about 30 miles. Uh, so Yanis and I are going to head over there and, uh, and hopefully uh, we'll make it there in a couple hours. We can throw the bikes into the back of the truck bed and uh, hopefully rescue the truck. Okay, so we have made it back to Great Sand Dunes National Park. We are at the start of the Medano Pass Primitive Road here. As you can see, they've completely closed this road. So we're going to head down there and find the rangers. We didn't bike the whole way here. Uh, a lovely person stopped and gave us a ride in. Uh, so thank you, Rhoda. Really appreciate that. You saved us about 15, 20 miles of that ride, which was fantastic. So we've got a little bit more energy now that I suspect we're gonna need to go and recover our vehicle. So for now, we're gonna head on down Medano Pass Road and uh, see what we can see down there. Okay, we've made it to the spot where the Raptor got stuck last night. Uh, this is where we got taken home from by the Ranger. It's 10, 15 in the morning. Uh, you can see the excavator, the digger there behind us. Um, this is where the Raptor got stuck. You can see it's really deep. It's dried out a lot. This was all just like wet, thick, heavy mud last night. But you can see how much of an operation that was to, to get that Raptor out. Since there's no one here, we're gonna keep going and see if we can get to our truck. Uh, along the way, obviously we can check out what the terrain is like and see if we think we can self-rescue or we need to wait for them or whatever. But we'll uh, be keeping our ears open for signs of, uh, signs of movement. You can see here how deep the footholds are from last night and we're walking on it now, barely sinking in at all. This is, it's still soft, but it's a lot better than last night. You could not walk on this last night. So you can probably see a little better on the video here this morning in the daylight. But that's the trail over there that comes down here. And then this just drops off into this giant crevice, which crosses the entire road. I mean, that thing must be 15 feet across. It's just sand. There's nothing of substance there. It's just so deep. That's the one I'm worried about. Okay, we have nearly made it. We are back in the truck. We've turned around on the trail and we are now about to head out. We've spoken to Dale, uh, one of the rangers here, and he has confirmed uh, that the trail is passable. In fact, he's come down from that side. We've still got a long drive because even when we get to the top, it's another 70 or 80 miles to get around, but we're free. It means we can get back to the trailer and get on with our journey at last. It hadn't rained since the previous day, but there was still a lot of water on the trail and we made full use of our four wheel drive and high clearance. We've made it. We are back here at the top of Medano Pass. Uh, hopefully from here on out, it should be pretty easy. Forest roads, then onto the main road and back to the RV. <laughs> what a busy day. Oh, and we still have to drive a few hours after Denver today. So today is not over yet, but we're getting there slowly but surely. Good thing is no one's hurt, no one's injured. Everyone's healthy, happy, dry, warm. The truck's not damaged, so we're all good. 
There were miles of dirt road the other side of Medano Pass before we hit pavement again. It took us a few hours to get back to the RV, but we made it. No time to rest though, we had to hook up the trailer and drive to Denver because Yanis's flight was the very next day. So yesterday, big truck rescue, that was pretty eventful. We spoke to the ranger at the scene, he said he has never seen damage like that on the trail before. Uh, the storm is about a once a year, maybe twice a year event for something that big. No one saw it coming, they had no warning of that one. Um, but yeah, the damage was just unparalleled. I imagine that trail is going to be closed for a while as they, as they do repairs, because that's going to take some serious work to do. But we got the truck out, uh, we went back the other way, the journey up the other way was uh, not too bad going, it was still definitely a four-wheel drive trail to get to the top, uh, the trail was pretty badly damaged again still. Then when we got to the top, it was like another 100 miles uh, round trip all the way to get back to where we were uh, camped at the RV park, uh, which wasn't ideal. Um, I'd rather not have driven for a few hours to get around there. Uh, a lot of the roads were pretty slow, um, but we made it, we're safe, the truck's fine, it's not damaged or anything. Um, so overall, I think it could have turned out a lot worse. Throughout the whole thing, we just really tried to stay calm, uh, think about what we could do to uh, make the situation better. It's very easy in those situations to make rash decisions. In the heat of the moment, you're worried, you want to get out of there. It's very easy to do something that is going to really make the situation worse. Take a risk, someone gets hurt, the truck gets stuck. If we had gone another few feet and tried to get through that first obstacle, we would never have made it through. And even if we had made it through that one, we certainly wouldn't have made it through the others after that and then the range sort of had to bring out machinery to help us get unstuck and that would all have just been a lot slower, a lot more difficult. So lots of decisions like that where we just decide to stay put, to take it easy, to consult with the rangers, get their input and things I think really helped yesterday turn out, uh, frankly as well as it could have done given the situation. Um, we did carry supplies with us, we had off-road equipment, we had all the gear, we had the emergency comms, we didn't use any of the off-road gear in the end. It was, it, that situation unless we had 25 foot ramps really nothing else was going to was going to get us through that um, but we we did use the communication gear that worked out really well I'm glad we carry that stuff I wasn't expecting to use it but we did but in the end uh, we made it back to uh, the RV park by about 3 30 in the afternoon yesterday and then we had a drive for another three and a half hours uh, four hours up to Denver uh, where we've been staying in the park so it was a really long day um, but we made it as I say, everyone's safe, the trailer's fine, obviously that was just stuck in the RV park for a while and the truck is, is not damaged or anything. So yeah, all in. Um, what was meant to be a quick two hour off-road journey along the, uh, the Medano Pass Primitive Road turned into uh, essentially a 24 hour ordeal. Um, so yeah, good times, type two fun. That's what I like to think. It's uh, something that we'll look back on and, and remember, a good story for the campfire. So Yannis' time with us here in Colorado has come to the end. We are heading now to the airport. So Yannis has spent around 10 days touring the Colorado National Parks with us. Right. So Yannis, what did you think? The trip was amazing. First of all, uh, I didn't expect to have so many experiences during uh, this trip. Uh, so the trip was really versatile. We went to mountains, to, to Black Canyon, we went to Masa Verde National Park as well to Sand Dunes uh, National Park. Uh, we hiked, we had several campfires, um, we visited uh, really beautiful places and I enjoyed it uh, really much. As well we went off-roading, which <laughs> finished with another great story. Would you go off-roading again with me? I would definitely go off-roading again with Matt. Yes. Just today experience to get there with my <laughs> off uh, being off-road. <laughs> so how was it uh, staying in the RV? I'm actually really surprised about uh, that you don't actually um, make so many compromises by staying in RV. Uh, it may seem really small from outside, uh, but actually it was enough of space for all three of us in one uh, RV. And uh, even the bed, which was turning into the table every day, was quite comfortable. And you're quite tall, right? How is it? In feet, I don't know. I still haven't grasped these uh, measurements. Uh, 
it's uh, 1 meter 90 centimeters. You can have in brackets how many feet. So was the length of the bed fine for you? Yes, it was really comfortable. I had great sleep. Uh, we were cooking food in our RV for all, almost all meals. We were only several times to uh, restaurants uh, eating out. Um, and I'm really pleased with this kind of living style. I could get used to that as well. So I completely understand that after one year spending in uh, in RV, you still don't feel like you miss something out. What are your favorite parts of this trip? The most uh, in my memory, memory will stay the Black Canyon of uh, Gunnison River. It was something that I have ne never seen in my life. Uh, so you have well. never seen a canyon before? Yeah, I have never seen a canyon before. And uh, the views were breathtaking. And uh, I enjoyed that uh, this national park uh, wasn't so uh, strict with barriers, so I didn't feel like forced in the jail and I could uh, sit on the rock and see the spectacular views from any point I wished to be in. That's awesome. Well, thank you for joining us, Janis. Of course, the off-roading with Matt was amazing as well. <laughs> and uh, even that storm hit, it was slightly scary uh, when we were going through those obstacles during the storm and uh, when we had to stop because the trail in front was washed out. But I'm happy in the end it ended uh, really well. Uh, and I'm happy I will have a story to remember and <laughs> to tell for it. Hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Let us know in the comments below what your craziest off-road extreme drama has been. And make sure to subscribe to our channel for more videos of the national parks. Hey Yanis, I have a question for you. Sure thing. Who let the dogs out? Woof, 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 woof. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that is the thing that never does. So Matt is happy that somebody is uh, actually uh, answering his somehow weird question. <laughs>